everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, we are going to discuss the lookup component inside Salesforce screen flows. So I have a screen flow open here, and I'm just going to open up my first screen. There's nothing on it so far. And I'm going to drag the lookup component here on the left to the screen. And the lookup component is a little bit unusual, so I'm thinking the best way to understand this will be to uh, show it to you first, and then I can describe what it's doing, and then we can go through a couple examples. So to start out, we have to fill in these required fields on the right, and the first one is the API name. Now this is the API name of uh, the component, so it doesn't have anything to do um, with anything inside Salesforce besides what you want to name this component, so I'll just call it component one. And then the next three fields uh, force us to define an existing relationship inside Salesforce so that the lookup component can copy it and use it. So that's a bit confusing, but let's say I want to look up an account. Um, you might think oh, I could just type in the ID here to look up the account. And that's where it's confusing and that's where you would be incorrect. So what we need to do is we actually need to type in a field like account ID. And so if you think of the opportunity object or the contact object, both of those objects have a field called account ID, which looks up to the account. And that's the relationship we're gonna copy here. So we're gonna use the account ID field. For the label, this is just the label that users will see inside the screen. So again, you could really call this anything and we will call it accounts. And then this final field, the object API name, is the field in, or excuse me, the object on which this first uh, field API name resides. So here we could actually type in either contact because there is a field on, con on the contact object called account ID, or we could also type in opportunity because there is a field on the opportunity called account ID. And that's what's confusing about this uh, lookup component is that you don't actually need to point to the source object that you're currently working with or anything like that. Your goal in working with this component is to duplicate an existing Salesforce relationship so that the flow can do the same uh, lookup mechanism behind the scenes. So I'm going to change this object API name back to contact. I'm going to press done. I'll click save and we'll just debug this so I can show you what it will look like. And there's nothing attached to this flow, but you can see once I click it, all the accounts pop up. And that's really all we need. So despite the fact that I'm pointing at either contacts or opportunities, I really just need the account. Um, so it doesn't really matter how I define the relationship, so long as a list of accounts appear for whoever's running through the screen to work with. So let's jump back to the screen, and I'll just show you... Um, you know, they, I could change this to opportunities, Oop, opportunity, my goodness, if I could spell opportunity correctly, and the functionality will be the same. And so I'll open this up, press run, and it took a second to load, but it did eventually get there, and now by clicking on this or typing in United, we can see that the uh, results for accounts with the name United show up here in the dropdown. So I'll close out the debug again, and let's run through some uh, common objects in Salesforce so you can get a few more uh, practice runs. So let's say we wanted to look up the uh, contact object, or we wanted a lookup of contacts here. Now we need a field or you know an existing object relationship where there's some object in Salesforce that points at the contact object and we could use like a contact ID is what I'm driving at. So I'll type in contact ID here and there's standard uh, objects that do this so I can think, think of the opportunity contact role is doing this. Also the object uh, campaign member has a field called contact ID. So if we use that existing relationship in the database as a way for the flow to understand what objects we want to look up it will uh, just show us the contacts here. And that's ultimately what we want. Because at the end of the day, once the user selects a record ID, we can either store that in a variable here. You know, we could call, we could make a resource, for example, and I'll show you. Um, you know, you could just call it contact ID, data type of text. 
And now whenever anyone selects a contact from the list, this variable will have our uh, contact ID value in it. And then we could you know, do an update, we could do a lookup, um, we could do a deletion. So, so long as we define the proper relationship, we can essentially use the value uh, later in the flow in any way that we want. So we have contact in here. I'm going to press done and save so you can see this in action. And because it's so unusual kind of how this works, I will do a few more examples. If you already got it, feel free to <laughs> click off the video, but I just want to show that um, this is how you set it up. So I searched Andy Young, who I know is one of the contacts that comes with the developer org. And again, we can just click it there. And if I press Andy Young, I don't know if it, it will save anything, but we see over here that the outputs for the component are the record ID gets stored and so does the name. So, so long as the user can select the record that you want, you can then use this ID value to do anything in the database. And I guess the point of that is that even though you may be referencing an object that has nothing to do with your flow, so long as you can get the right ID, it doesn't matter. So let's think of another one. Perhaps opportunities is one. So I know that there's an object called opportunity line item and that the opportunity line item object has a relationship or a lookup field to the opportunity. And that field is called opportunity ID. And so I'll change the label last, we'll call it opportunity. But by referencing this existing relationship in Salesforce, we can get this component to show a list of opportunities. And again, I'm gonna press save and debug just so you can see it uh, work in action. And I don't know, is there like a generator opportunity? Okay, yeah, so I search for generator, all the generators show up. So it's, it's definitely somewhat confusing, but once you start to see it in action, hopefully it makes more sense. The relationship or the lookup relationship you're defining in the component may have absolutely nothing to do with your flow. So you might not be working with opportunity line items at all. That doesn't matter. This component is just looking at the relationships in the database and says, hey, I see how this works. Let me use that so I can show a user a list of opportunities. And I don't know why it's set up that way. I just kind of know that this works. And so I wanted to share it with you. I'm going to do two more examples. And one is for a common object that people often look up in flows, and that is the user object. The user object is somewhat unique in that you can actually uh, use that as the API name or the object API name and so we could change the label to user and the field API name is uh, you can use the created by ID you could also use the last modified by ID it so happens that the created by ID and last modified by IDs are lookup relationships so you could theoretically put in any object down here so if I did account or if I did contact I mean, we are effectively referencing that same lookup field, which is present on every object in the database. Of course, the user object itself has the created by user on it, and therefore has a lookup relationship to a user, and so we can use that as well. I'll press done, I'll press save, and if we debug this, we will be able to search the existing users in Salesforce. So I pop up as a recent uh, person, if I type in, I guess, integration, yeah, there's two integration users in this developer environment, so they show up there. And again, if you select it and press finish, the user that you looked up will show up right there. So I'm going to close that out, and the final example or the final kind of thing that I want to show you is what to do if the relationship doesn't exist currently. So, so far, every example we've used an existing standard relationship. And what do you do if the relationship is not standard or doesn't already exist in Salesforce? So if you're in a scenario where there's no existing relationship that you can reference for your lookup component, your next step would just be to create the relationship that you wish existed. And I can give you an example of that. So if I tab over here on the home screen, I can go to setup and I'll look at the object manager. So I have a custom object in this developer org called widget. And right now there's no way for me to use it in a lookup component because nothing in the database looks up to a widget. So 
to resolve that, what I can do is just go to really any object in Salesforce. Cases are the first thing that came to mind. And I need to create a lookup from any object I pick to the widget object. That way the lookup component can reference that relationship to show widgets in the flow. So here on the case object, I'll go to fields and relationships. I'll press new and we will just do a lookup relationship. And I'm going to relate it to my widget object down here at the bottom. In this example, you would select the object that you uh, don't have a relationship for and press next. I'm just going to uh, keep all the defaults. We'll just call it the widget. Press next. Might take a second to load. I'm going to make it visible to everybody. And why not? Just add it to all the profiles. And sure, I guess I can make it. Um, a related list. So feel free to kind of change that for your own specific environment. But once that relationship is established, that's the key piece. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of the case fields. I'm going to get the API name of my lookup um, from the case to the widget. Again, you don't have to be on a case. You can really be on any object as long as you create a lookup relationship between any object and the one that you're trying to look up. Once I have the API name, I'm going to go back to my flow and what I'm actually going to do is close out the original flow and I'm going to go to view details and versions of that screen flow we were working with because I already had an active version and by doing this when I open flow builder again that new field will be accessible here I think you can run into issues if you kind of don't refresh the flow in between field creation so back on our lookup component, here I can paste that field API name, label, I'll just call it widget, and then the source object will just be the case. And so this will let us search widgets. I'll press done, I will press save. We'll debug this and I'll just confirm, I think I only have one widget in there, it's like a test, but we'll just confirm that I can indeed look for my test widget. Yeah, so as soon as I click it, my favorite test widget shows up in the list here, and there's only one record in the database. So with all that said, I hope you found this helpful. We went through several uh, examples, but just to recap, the lookup component in the screen flow utilizes existing relationships in the database to show uh, a list of records, and then once you get the ID of the record you're working with, you can really take any action in flow. So. Although it is confusing, the objects you reference here uh, don't have to have anything to do with the logic or uh, objects you are working with in your flow. And if for some reason you are in a scenario where an existing relationship doesn't exist, you can always create one in Salesforce to reference in the flow. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see, and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce flow tutorials designed to turn you into a flow ninja. With that said, have a great day.